For our Sandra Silberspeg fish, we're gonna start with our paper vertical, just tall, way up and down. We're gonna start with pencil. We're gonna need a Sharpie and we're also gonna need watercolor. So you'll need paper towel, paint brushes of your choice, water bucket filled an inch full, and then a paint palette. And I purposely chose this one because a lot of times when I hand out paint palettes, kids say, there's no paint in my palette. Even if it looks like there's no paint in your palette, there is right on the edge here all this yellow is still usable so until it's totally white and empty there's still lots of watercolor in there so of course we're going to start with our name on back and you're going to write it near a corner this goes for all year and then you're going to write your class code in a circle and the reason we write it in the corner is because in case you want to use the back this is easier to erase rather than it being huge and then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna start with some fish of different sizes. Minimum of three fish. You can do as many as you'd like. Just keep in mind, you're gonna be sharpening and painting these. And Sandra Silverswig likes to do sort of basic shapes. You're gonna start with sort of an eye shape or football shape. And then she adds a basic triangle tail. And sometimes her bodies of her fish are more elongated and sometimes they're wider and there's some large fish some smaller fish notice they're facing different directions i'm doing a pattern but you do not have to so i'm going left right left right and i'm going to fit one more here because i want it to be sort of evenly spaced out and now in my background i'm going to add some lines she often does different designs like wavy lines that go across her whole page to show movement. And sometimes she adds maybe little polka dots or stripes or zigzags. So we're gonna do that with pencil first. And I really want you to take your time on this. A lot of times we want to rush, but this is about detail, adding interest so that when someone looks at your art, they want to keep looking. It doesn't take them just one second to look and see everything. I'm going to add some stripes here. Now I'm adding my designs with pencil. You can certainly at this point switch to Sharpie if you think you're ready. But remember, you just get one paper. So obviously we can't erase Sharpie, so be mindful of that. So you would Sharpie outline all your designs. And then you're also going to add some eyes. She actually does sort of realistic shaped eyes for her fish. It's part of her style. And she also often has different layers, so extra circles. Sometimes she even outlines the eye an extra time. And then sometimes she has a fin, sometimes she just has designs. So I might add a design here that looks sort of like a fin. You could add a little triangle as an actual fin. Sometimes she does lines like this, sort of a, like a leaf pattern. The line down the center and then dividing sections. Sometimes she just does vertical lines. And she also does some smaller details as well. Some swirls, circles. All right, I'm gonna speed this up. I'm also gonna add some more details in the back. Now that my Sharpie designs are done, I'm gonna go in with my pencil or my large pink eraser from your supply bucket and I'm gonna erase any extra pencil lines that I maybe missed before I start to add paint. All right, I'm ready for my watercolor. So I have my paper towel nearby. I have my paint palette. I have two brush sizes, whichever you prefer. I know I have some smaller details, so I want the smaller one and I have some larger spaces for the larger brush. And I have my water filled just an inch full. And if your paints have not been used yet today, you're gonna have to wake them up. So you're gonna have to add a tiny bit of water to each, tiny bit. 
don't want too much because then it's just a wet puddle sitting in there all day and it kind of ruins the paint. If you know you're not going to use black, you don't have to wake that one up because the black paint often makes the other ones kind of um, cloudy if you're not going to use that. So I personally like to start with my lightest color and you're going to decide for your fish if you're going to do your fish warm colors or cool colors and then you're going to do your background the opposite. So I'm going to start with yellow and I've just dipped in the water. I'm gently swirling in my palette and I already have a brush filled with yellow. So I'm going to add yellow throughout my fish. Before I wash my brush, I'm going to make sure all my yellow is done because otherwise I'm washing away all this gorgeous pigment or color and it's just wasted in my water bucket, which I don't want to waste. You're welcome to have an extra paint palette, an empty mixing tray here if you would like. So now I'm washing my brush because I know I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to blend some orange into that yellow. You're definitely welcome to blend on your paper as long as you're not mixing in the paint palette wash before I switch. And I'm going to speed this up so that you can have your own time to paint. 